In this video, we're going to be discussing the doors. Not those doors, these doors. Specifically, the door behaviors found in Mac. So there's one-way door, there's door rotate, there's door rotate multi, there's just door, which is for animated doors, there's door slide, and lastly, steel door, which you may not have. That, that one's actually part of a DLC, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So a lot of different door behaviors, a lot of you know different ways to use these and it can be kind of confusing to know well, which door does what which one should i use in what situation so we're going to go through all of that and in order to demonstrate this you know I, I always try to do something fun and informative and it was kind of hard to come up with a good idea for you know how do you make doors fun and informative and uh finally i landed on a uh, jail right what's what's not fun about a jail right so now i've never been to jail i don't know about you but i've just never been so i had to do some research first i had to understand well, what does a jail you know the inside of a jail look like what is the booking process so that i could make this as realistic as possible and that's what i did for you so let's take a look and i'll, I'll step you through uh the entire scene and we'll explore the door behaviors as we go. So right here, the first door right out of the bat, we have one-way door. So that means when I open this door, it's gonna open and then in a few seconds, it's just gonna close all by itself. And then I can't open the door again. The door is now locked. So that, that's what it means by one-way door. It can only go through it. Okay, so here we have the Max Correctional Facility. Um, that sign was actually made by a, a good friend of mine, uh, Glitched Pixels. So shout out to him. Be sure to leave him a, a thanks in the comments below. Looks great, and it was just like a, a really amazing job that he did for me, so I appreciated that. Uh, all right, so here uh, we have a door that rotates. So you'll see right away I get the E to open the door. Press E to open the door. Press that. That opens the door. And here we can see a man that is being searched uh, for any, you know, possessions that he might have before he gets uh, processed. So close that. Leave them to it. Uh, all right. So next we have our security door here. So this door, I'm using door rotate multi. And don't worry about the terminology. We'll get into the details in a little bit. But notice that I'm using a button for this one. So I'm just going to click the button. Opens the door. And go inside now the door stays open i can't close it uh, but i can click this button here and watch what happens next see this door there so press the button. so that door opens that door closes and then as i go through here that door closes behind me so i'll show you how i set all that up but that that was be using the door rotate multi behavior for that okay so this uh in this room <laughs> they would be doing uh, the processing. So they're going to do fingerprints. You get your lovely jumpsuit and get to change outfits in there. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any characters that had, you know, jail jumpsuits. So I didn't actually go that far, but you get the idea. Um, and then let's see here. I made a little warden's office right here. So I'm just going to open that door. That's just using uh, door rotate again. So nothing new there. But in this room, we do have another door. And it may not be obvious where that door is, but it's in here and it's right here. It's a sliding door. So really anything can be a door. It could be a wall. It could be a bookcase like here. It could be a, a photo, a painting. You know, just about anything could be a door. And really in this case, we're just sliding it. So if I use the door, it slides over to the left. And as you can see, there's a little hidden armory inside the warden's office just in case. All right, so let's go back out through here. So, uh, again, this is just door rotate opening this door. I had a lot of blue doors, so just processing. All right, and then now that we've uh, gotten our orange jumpsuit, the next step in the, um, in the jail process is medical examination. Every prisoner goes through a, a medical review to make sure that they're healthy before they get thrown into the population to be shanked. And then uh, lastly, before they go anywhere further, they get their one phone call. So there's our uh, bank of phones. And then uh, once they're done there, they, uh, they go into the, the actual jail and sit in their little cell. And then this is the last one that we'll look at. This is uh, Steel Door. 
Now, this is what I was saying. You may not have this one because this actually came with a DLC. This came with the Dungeons DLC, so did the bars, incidentally. Um, and that one was done by iFly. So this is actually the first time I've actually, I've done a behavior that wasn't a Necrom behavior, but I did say I would try to cover all of the behaviors in Max, um, and that includes DLCs and anything that people actually contribute, but just the ones that are in Max, right? Not the ones that are like on the forums or, you know, cause it just it becomes too much. Um, but this one operates very much the same way as some of the other doors. You get a prompt, you press the, the button, it opens. So you don't necessarily need this one. I could use the, the door rotate and it would do the same thing. Okay, so time for me to make myself comfortable because now I'm in jail. Uh, so there we go. So that's our jail. Now let's go through each door behavior and see how they're set up. So we're back here. So we'll start with our one-way door. This one's probably one of the simpler ones. Uh, there's not a lot to it. We have uh, a close delay. So when the door opens, it's going to delay. It, it's going to delay the close and then automatically close after so many seconds. In this case, it's just two. Uh, there's a sound for opening the door. There's a sound for closing the door. Uh, but that's it. Nothing else you need to do with that one. Step right through. All right, and then all the way over here to this door is our next one, which is the uh, door rotate. So this one's intended for non-animated doors. As you can see, this is an animated door, so it can work on an uh, animated door as well, but it's intended for non-animating doors. So that would also mean that, you know, it doesn't have to be a door, right? Just like we talked about before, it could be a wall, it could be a bookcase, whatever. Um, so, you know, really just anything that you want to use as a door and that doesn't already have an animation built in, you can go ahead and use this. We have some prompt text here, um, but we're going to skip over that for a second. The first thing I want to point out is it says open with E key and that is checked. So if you'll recall, when I approached these doors, it gave me a prompt that said press E to open the door. Now if the checkbox was not checked, then I would get the, the prompt text door is locked, find a way to open it. And so the, the reason is for, for that is if you want the door to be automatically available to the user, to the, the player to be able to open and close at will, then you check the box and that gives them the, the E key to activate it. If not, then you're going to need to provide them with a way to open it or not. I mean, I suppose you could just leave it locked. Maybe it's just a you know decorative door. Um, in that case, I might change the prompt text, but it's up to you. Uh, but if you want them to be able to open it, but not like just automatically, maybe it requires a key, then you would need some sort of object logic link to it, like a key. <laughs> and then they, if they find that key, they pick it up, then they're able to open the door. So either way is fine. Um, otherwise, you have the prompt text here, open to, you know, press E to open the door, press E to close the door. Uh, we have the uh, door type, either manual or auto. So, you know, obviously if it's manual, you have to activate it. If it's auto, it'll just activate on its own. Um, I think auto is re really just like for meant for keys. So if you have the key and you walk up to the door, the door's just gonna open. The door range, that's just how close do you have to be in order to, uh, to interact with the door. And then once again, we have the two sound slots for open and close. So fairly straightforward. All right, so this one was a little bit more complicated because it just takes, you know, more pieces, um, but it was the most fun to set up. So this is door rotate multi. So uh, this is very similar to door rotate. There is a dis uh, like a very important distinction and we'll cover that here in a moment, but notice here that the door style is switch or zone. So naturally I have it logic linked to that button over there and that's what uh, is activating the door. You could also open it manually. You could also do auto just like the previous uh, behavior. Um, and in which case, if you're opening it manually or, or uh, then you would get a prompt, you know, press E to open the door, press E to close the door. But if it's switchers, switch zone or if it's auto, those aren't gonna apply. Uh, the rotate style is just the direction the door is opening. So this one opens to the right, which means, you know, it's gonna swing to the right. If you did left, it would swing to the left like that. Uh, and then the rotation speed is how fast is it opening. The use range uh, is how close do you have to be. I don't know why I didn't do 100. The other one was 100. I, I guess I could have made that 100, but eh, it doesn't matter. And then um, 
and honestly that doesn't really matter at all if it's the switch because it's the, the switch itself that's activating the door so that actually is irrelevant in this case uh, and then once again the the sound for when the door opens the sound for when the door closes now this is logic linked to a switch so we I, pretty sure we've covered switches before but just in case I'll, I'll cover this just to make sure everybody's on the same page uh, the switch behavior you know can be applied to just about anything interactable uh, you know the switch is off by default so you have to press the button in order to activate whatever it's linked to we have the prompt text uh, when you walk up to it it tells you how to interact with it how close do you have to be to interact with it the player level which is actually a suggestion that I made that Necrom was nice enough to include. You could uh, level gate this. You could put in a, uh, a required level in order to activate it. So that would prevent a, a, too, you know, a player that's too low to get through the door until they're ready. So that was kind of an addition that we added later on. We have the uh, switch type, which is multi-use. That means that I can continue to open and close this door as many times as needed. You could also make it a single use. Um, and then of course the sound for when the button is activated. Um, and in, in, incidentally, if you're ever not sure what the sounds do, they're usually covered. Yeah, sound one is when it's switched off. So that must mean that sound two, or sound zero is when it's switched on. Um, so they're usually covered in the text up here if you read closely. All right. So once the door was open, then I have naturally I have a logic link to this button as well to just toggle that. So if it was open, it'll close it. If it's closed, it'll open it and so on. That way we can, we can go both ways. Uh, and it also logic linked to this door, um, which would op activate this door as well. So that's how I was able to open one door and close the other door simultaneously, just FYI. Okay. And then it's the same thing. This is the uh, door rotate multi so that it can be activated by a switch. So that's really the, the big difference between door rotate multi and just door rotate is there are multiple ways that you can activate this door as opposed to door rotate um, that doesn't have the ability to, to link a switch to it. Okay. Uh, there is one other thing that I was thinking about. Oh, it's the key, right? So if you, yeah, this can be opened with a switch, whereas, you know, door rotate can be open. You could logic link it to a key. So that's a, that's kind of the big differences between those two. Otherwise they're very similar. I mean, you know, how, how much different can a door really be? Um, all right. So, so you can see I was messing around with a probe trying to get the mirror to work. Um, all right, so here we have door sliding. So this one's quite a bit different than the other doors. So this one says it has a move angle. That means which direction is it going to, to slide in? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down, left or right at an angle? It doesn't really matter any, any direction. So imagine a, uh, a circle with a, uh, 360 pattern all the way around it then you can just look at the degrees on that circle and say, okay, I want it to go 90 degrees or 180 degrees or 270 degrees, so on and so forth. And that'll dictate where it's going to go. Move distance is just how far is it going to go? How many units? Uh, move delay, that's just how long is it going to take to move? So you might want it to go much quicker or much slower, it just depends. Um, and then the move period for how long is it going to be moving? Uh, that's obviously milliseconds. So that's 1.5 seconds. All right. Then we have the uh, prompt text. So again, if it's unlocked, then you're just going to get the typical prompt text, you know, press E to use the door. If it's locked, then you're going to get doors locked, find a way. So very similar to door rotate in that way. You can let logic link a key to it. Um, you have your auto and manual drop down for door type. We already covered that before. Uh, door style. Um, this, I've actually used this before in previous video. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but basically the way it works is you can have it close behind you. So in this case, I, I just left it open, but I could have it close after so many seconds, or I could have it close and lock after so many seconds, uh, which is covered here. There's five seconds if I were to choose to use that. And then um, the trigger uh on open on close or none i'm choosing none uh so 
Ah, uh, triggers. Uh, sorry, I had to read that to. to I don't remember everything all the time. So uh, trigger to trigger the links, right? So if it's linked to something, so you could trigger something else when the door opens. Let's suppose that you have a secret passage and the door opens and that triggers an object that has the shake uh, camera effect on it, right? It could be triggering that. So that's kind of what that's for. And then last but not least, we have steel door. Now, I mentioned before, you may not have this one. And the reason that is, is this actually came from a DLC. So if you don't have the DLC, probably don't have this behavior. It came from the Dungeons DLC by iFly. So I'm assuming he did all the, the uh, behavior as well. All right, so it's very much like Door Rotate. The only thing I'm going to uh, point out that is a little bit different is this one says cannot close. You can check that box and then the door wouldn't be able to uh, be closed in that case. So, um, that's really the only thing I see that's different. Otherwise, if you don't have this one, it's fine. Just use door rotate does the same basic thing. Okay. Uh, but that's it. That's all the door behaviors, a whole bunch that we covered today. Um, if you enjoyed the video, if you feel like I've earned it, click all the buttons down below. That helps me out a lot. Makes me feel good as well. Thanks for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.